Bruce Leslie McLaren was born on August the 30th, 1937, in Auckland, New Zealand. His father was a motor racing enthusiast, competing in local hill climbs and time trials. Through genetics and learned behaviour, McLaren caught the car bug. By 1957, McLaren had graduated from his Austin Ulster to a Cooper Climax Sports. His wins on the domestic scene were enough to qualify him for that year's Grand Prix. 1958, McLaren showed enough promise to be selected for the New Zealand International Grand Prix Organisation's Driver in Europe scheme. Jack Brabham, driving for the Cooper Formula One team, persuaded Coopers to give McLaren a spot. 1959, Coopers had now promoted McLaren to Formula One and in that year he won the American Grand Prix at the age of 22, the youngest ever driver to do so. McLaren had risen from obscurity to stardom in less than two seasons. By 1963, McLaren decided to follow Jack Brabham's lead and go out on his own. He was to prove himself as the perfect combination of driver and engineer. In 1966, the McLaren M2B made its Formula One debut at Monaco. Team McLaren's racing program accelerated with the addition of two factors, McLaren design expertise and the driving skills of fellow New Zealanders, Denny Hulme and Chris Amon. The three Kiwis had many moments of glory on the American and European racetracks. 1967. It was in the Can-Am series in the late 1960s that McLaren first revealed itself as an awesome competitive force. Between 67 and 71, Works McLaren in their distinctive orange livery won an incredible 37 out of 43 Can-Am races. In 1969, they won every single round. McLaren and Holm have swept all eight of the Can-Am events this year and are now dead even with 125 points each. Their bright orange McLaren Chevys take the front positions for this ninth event. McLaren in number four, Holm in number five. Their monstrously powerful 527 brake horsepower M6A Can-Am cars were taking on the big teams with the big money and annihilating them. 1968, McLaren wins the Belgian Grand Prix at Spa in a car bearing his name. 1970, the McLaren Holm pair were at the height of their powers when disaster struck. It was 12.22 p.m. June 2nd, 1970. While testing his latest Can-Am car at the Goodwood track in England, the rear hinged bodywork suddenly flipped open and sent the car spinning into a nearby concrete flag station platform. Bruce McLaren was killed instantly. A tragedy because McLaren had only begun to show the exotic world of international racing, his innovative thinking and determination. Close friend and team lawyer Teddy Mayer and chief engineer Tyler Alexander stepped up and guided the team through the aftermath. Yardley took over title sponsorship of a new McLaren in 1972 and it paid dividends for Denny, who took McLaren's first Formula One win in two and a half years. 1981. The MP41 began a revolution. Under the supervision of engineer John Barnard, it was the first Formula One car ever built using carbon fibre construction. 1988. The Honda-powered MP44 becomes the most successful Grand Prix car in a single season, winning 15 out of 16 races, with Senna taking his first title. Designed by Steve Nichols and assisted by technical director Gordon Murray, it was based on the design of Murray's original low-line Brabham from 1986. The McLaren MP44 is the most successful Formula One car of all time. 1989. With turbos banned, a new era of normally aspirated engines had arrived and the McLaren Honda V10 package remained unstoppable. 1990. McLaren, under the supervision of Gordon Murray, the famed South African designer, modified their MP45. The McLaren proved to have an outright speed advantage, giving Senna the world championship. No longer driving it conscious and I was in a different dimension for me. Ayrton Senna and McLaren went on to win the 1991 world title. McLaren have had further success, winning three driver championships and two constructors championships since. Those who knew him well say Bruce McLaren was possessed by a dream. The dream to build the world's best road and track cars. 1993. The McLaren F1 road car went into production, setting new standards for road car performance and engineering. It set the record for the world's fastest production car, reaching 391 kilometres per hour. On May the 12th, 2004, Her Majesty the Queen officially opened the McLaren Technology Centre and headquarters of the McLaren Group at Woking. The McLaren Technology Centre is recognised as a cutting-edge developer of Formula One.
It attracts the best engineering talent in the world and provides an impetus for the company's future with most of the group's 900 employees under one roof. Two thousand and eleven, McLaren's MP4 12C set the new benchmark in sports car construction by introducing carbon monocell technology derived from Formula One. The 12C began production, signalling the rebirth of a company that hasn't had a distinct production vehicle for over a decade. Its stunning performance is delivered by McLaren's own 3.8-litre twin-turbo V8 engine, producing an extremely potent 616 horsepower. 2012. Not being content to launch just the 12C, McLaren engineers believe the sky's the limit, hence the inclusion of the 12C Spider. You feel that you're more part of the world, I would say, without a roof. It does make you smile every second you're driving it getting the fresh air, you hear every single noise that comes from the car, but also outside of the car. When you get a balance that suits you and you feel a part of that car, it's just phenomenal. You know, you can feel every bump in the road and you know exactly what's gonna happen next when you enter a corner. It just feels a lot more natural. You smell the tires, you smell the brakes, you smell the car and it really makes you feel part of that car. The McLaren P1 Hypercar enters production. The P1 is a limited production hybrid supercar, considered to be the long-awaited McLaren F1 successor, utilising hybrid power and Formula One technology, and producing a massive combined 903 brake horsepower, and achieving a sub-seven minute lap at the Nürburgring. It captures everything that we're about. Formula One heritage with form-following function. As you can see, what Bruce McLaren left behind was much more than just a memory. Today's company of McLaren International has evolved into a modern multi-billion dollar enterprise dedicated to winning in the most watched and most expensive of all sports, Formula One, and to producing limited edition high performance sports cars. By continuing to bear the founder's name, they acknowledge the New Zealand inspiration for the company. There is no doubt the McLaren's 12C and 12C Spider are the most exciting, capable and technologically advanced sports cars McLaren has ever made. Be assured, these new generation McLarens, with a number of new models planned in the coming years, will again propel this iconic, race-bred mark to the head of the world's most elite sports car pack. year of the McLaren story. The Giltrap Group are proud to open the world's 50th McLaren showroom. McLaren, Auckland.